The Whole30 diet is advertised as a total lifestyle change and followers rave about its health benefits. Meanwhile, critics claim that it's just another unsustainable diet fad. So is it actually a good idea? That's what I'm looking at in this video. The Whole30 is a month-long eating program that's designed to help you lose weight, um, improve your relationship with food, and achieve overall long-term health. The idea behind the program is simple. Just completely cut out foods that may harm your health for a period of 30 days. Now after that, you slowly reintroduce the foods you miss um, while monitoring the effects they have on your body. Now during the month-long elimination period, no cheating is allowed. So going off track entails starting the challenge over from day one. Now unlike other diets, there is no need to track calories, measure portions, or count points. Also, weighing yourself is strictly reserved for days one and 30 of the program. Let's look at foods you can eat. Foods allowed on the diet consist of minimally processed foods. These include meat and poultry, uh, so like beef, veal, pork, lamb, chicken, etc., uh, fish and seafood, um, eggs, all types, um, as well as foods made from them, um, such as a homemade uh, mayonnaise. Fruits, fresh and dried fruits, although fresh is preferred, um, all types of vegetables, and uh, nuts and seeds as well. Um, all types of nuts and seeds, but not peanuts. Uh, they're technically a legume. Uh, nut milks, nut butters, and nut flowers, flowers uh, are also allowed. Uh, and then you can have some fats as well, healthy plant oils, coconut oil, duck fat, clarified butter, and ghee. When minimally processed foods must be used, the diet encourages that you choose products uh, with the shortest ingredients list, and with uh, ingredients that you recognize. Now I feel that part is not really correct in that uh, most food ingredients that the average person uh, cannot recognize or pronounce are actually perfectly safe for you. Now let's look at foods to avoid. Certain foods must be completely eliminated for the entire 30 days. These include sugar and artificial sweeteners, so uh, raw sugar, honey, maple syrup, agave syrup, and, and even products that contain these sweeteners, as well as artificial sweeteners. Um, alcohol, all types of alcohol, uh, grains. Now, regardless of their degree of processing, all grains, including wheat, corn, oats, and rice, are to be avoided, uh, much like paleo. Uh, pulses and legumes, uh, so that's most peas, lentils, and beans, including peanut butter, um, they should be avoided. Soy, all, all soy products. Uh, dairy, including cow, goat, and sheep's milk, yogurt, cheese, ice cream, and other products derived from dairy. Um, remember that clarified butter and ghee are allowed and processed additives. These include uh, carrageenan, MSG, or sulfites. So any food or beverage containing these ingredients should be avoided as well. There's also no such thing as a cheat meal on this diet. Instead, you are encouraged to uh, strictly follow these guidelines at all times. If you do slip up, the diet's founders strongly encourage that you uh, restart from day one. The proposed benefits of the Whole30 diet. Now, following the Whole30 diet perfectly for 30 days uh, is said to have a number of health benefits. These include fat loss, higher energy levels, better sleep, reduced food cravings, and improved athletic performance. The diet's founders also promise it will change the way you think about food. Now, proponents of the diet also claim that it can alter the emotional relationship you have with food and your body in a positive way. Although these claimed benefits appear very attractive, keep in mind that there's no scientific studies uh, that are backing them up. And not just studies on the actual diet, but any studies to suggest that uh, completely eliminating dairy or legumes or grains or other food sources uh, have any of those reported health effects. Are there any potential negative effects of the Whole30 diet? Look, the fact that it's only 30 days uh, means potential negative health effects um, are pretty small. I mean, avoiding nutrient-rich foods like legumes and dairy may make it more difficult to meet all your daily nutrient requirements during the month, but for one month, you can't really do much damage. Now, if you go longer than a month, that's where you could get problems. For instance, those who keep slipping up and having to restart over from day one. Now, in addition, although rigid rules can be a good way to reset eating habits, for some people, restrictive diets with no allowance for indulgences are generally not sustainable over time. So again, you wouldn't do this for more than a month. Overall, because of its restrictive nature, the Whole30 diet uh, will help you to create a calorie deficit that you need to lose some weight. Um, and you also eat less junk food and processed foods because you're not allowed to. But unless the food choices you make on this diet become a habit, uh, the weight loss you experience uh, is very unlikely to last long term. Additionally, there's no good reason to eliminate uh, grains, legumes, and dairy from your diet. Basically, the Whole30 diet can be helpful if you want to like 
uh, reset your eating habits, uh, and it's certainly one of the better diets out there. But it does not encourage the kind of eating pattern that you'll enjoy following long term, nor does it encourage a healthy relationship with food. And that's a deal breaker. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative. And don't forget to subscribe to the Authority Nutrition YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button below this video.